Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we uh, went for our break, we were studying chapter uh, uh, 8, Kingdom Authority. And we were looking at the reason why uh, you and I have authority is because of our position. Uh, we have positional authority and uh, we were uh, we read Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 to 6 where it says that God has uh, raised us up and seated us together with Christ uh, in the heavenly uh, places. So from this verse we learn or gather that you know as believers we are seated in a position of higher authority at the right hand of the Father and um, and as uh, uh, seated in that place, uh, you know, uh, not just physically, but spiritually, we're talking about uh, our positional authority, uh, you know, where we are seated. We are seated at the right hand of God. That is where we are. Everything is underneath our feet, which means we have authority over every demonic work, every demonic spirit, everything. Uh, of the enemy is under our uh, feet. Uh, that's what Paul says, you know, the God of peace uh, will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. So as believers, you know, uh, uh, it, again, it's a choice that we can make, just like the policeman, you know, there's a choice we could, the policeman can uh, overlook the, the, the laws, the traffic laws that are being violated, or he can raise up his hand and stop when he sees a violation. In the same way, you know, uh, uh, each one of us have this positional authority that we are seated at the right hand of God uh, in the spiritual sense. Uh, but, you know, we can choose to do things. We can either choose to fall asleep uh, and be cozy at the right hand of God the Father, you know, and uh, just say, you know, it's a wonderful privilege and a wonderful opportunity and just be at peace and fall asleep there uh, with shalom over us you know, covering us, or we can, you know, um, we can um, say, God, you know, thank you for raising me up uh, to such a position of authority. There is no other place of authority than this that you could uh, give to me that can be vested upon me. And, you know, we can even say, God, if I'm the only person here on planet Earth, I'm willing to use that authority in the environment where you have placed me and I'm willing to allow your kingdom authority to flow through my life, okay? Uh, we see that even in the Garden of Eden, uh, this is what uh, God, you know, did for uh, or gave Adam and Eve. He gave them authority to take over, to subdue, you know, to rule. Um, but we see what, uh, uh, what happened, you know, they sadly gave over that authority to Satan and they became slaves of um, Satan. So all of us, we were slaves of Satan at one point of time because, um, you know, uh, of our sin. But now since we have been redeemed uh, uh, through the blood of Jesus, uh, we are no longer, uh, you know, uh, under the uh, uh, the first Adam uh, uh, or under what Adam has incurred because of what he has done, but we are under the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the last Adam that is Jesus Christ and we receive all of the blessings and receive all of the benefits and thus we also receive the authority that ha uh, has been given to us. So we can say, God, you know, I'm willing to allow your kingdom authority to just flow through my life. Uh, so it's a choice that we make as uh, believers, okay? What do we do with this positional authority? Uh, whether we get cozy and sleep at the right hand of God, or we use that authority uh, 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 to do what God wants us to get done here on earth. Okay, so I want to encourage us and I want to challenge us that God has vested so much kingdom authority in your life and in my life. And it's time that we rose up or we rise up and exercise that God given um, authority. Now, the challenge. Um, that you and I can face is this that, you know, you and I operate in two worlds and that's a big challenge because we are in this natural world and anytime we face a problem, 
our immediate response is, uh, you know, hey, let me figure out how to solve it. Uh, yes, we know we live in this world. And uh, yes, sometimes we need to address some things in the natural that needs to be done. But as believers, as people who know that we are part of the kingdom of God, as people who know that we are that we have been vested with kingdom authority uh, in our lives, we must also say, hey, how can I exercise my God-given authority to address this problem or this situation? Yes, it's a problem, it's a situation in the natural, but how do I exercise my God-given authority to address this problem or situation in the uh, natural? And I think, you know, uh, this is a, a challenge. Uh, how can I bring in a kingdom authority into this uh, situation. Yes, I need to address uh, it in the natural. Uh, I may need to do some things in the natural and definitely you can do it. But also remember that everything in the natural is subject to the spiritual. Okay, everything in the natural is subject to the spiritual. Everything in the natural can be changed from the spiritual so uh, your problem, my problem can be changed. Uh, that sickness can be healed. Those uh, demonic works can be stopped if we come, uh, if you and I make a choice to come through it from the spiritual into the um, natural, okay? Uh, but the challenge is uh, for us to go beyond what our reason uh, tells us our logical reasoning tells us how we look at it, what we say, you know, but um, um, how we think about it. But if we look at things in the natural and say, you know, I'm going to handle this from the spiritual realm because, you know, I'm going to let the spirit of God move and work. You know, I'm going to bring in uh, the, the spiritual into this natural and things are going to work out for um, me. So, um, as people with kingdom authority, we must learn to be conscious and live out of the kingdom which is within us and live out of the kingdom power and dominion that is vested in us. And we must do this at um, all times. So um, what do we have authority over? Or what are the rem rems of authority that we have? or that we have authority over. You know, um, just going back to the example of the policeman, uh, it would be very wrong if the policeman tried to come into your house or came into my house and told you or me what we should be doing in our house. Well, uh, he does not have the authority to do that because he's just a traffic police and his rem of authority is on the road, it's on the streets. Now, when he steps out of his realm of authority, uh, his his authority doesn't function. So he cannot come and, you know, um, dictate to me things that I need to do in my own house. Uh, now, the same principle applies uh, 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 with you and me as well. We need to understand our realm of authority because when we understand that realm of authority, then we can see the fruit of the uh, kingdom authority just flowing in and through our lives. Okay. Now, first, you and I uh, need to understand that we uh, that we have authority over every demonic work. So what do we have authority over? First thing is that we need to understand that we have authority over every demonic work. Anything and everything that Satan is doing, you and I, you and I have authority over. If it is anything that is demonic, then you have authority over. You can speak, you can bind, you can cast out, you can nullify, you can overthrow it. So for example, uh, in your place of work, you know, uh, when or, uh, you know, uh, uh, your friend or in, your neighbor comes to you and says, you know, hey, I'm having these terrible nightmares. Uh, it's been disturbing me, uh, very disturbing uh, dreams. And in my dreams, I'm seeing all of these snakes. And, you know, I'm seeing all of these kind of things. Uh, and just explaining to you some really weird uh, demonic things. Now you can look at it in the natural um, and, you know, uh, you can say some things, but you can also look at it in, 
in the spiritual sense and you can look at it and say hey i have authority the uh, uh, god has vested his authority god has given me the right to use his name uh, he has given me um, the authority to uh, to speak uh, to cast out demons, uh, to overthrow every work of and the assignment and the schemes of the evil one. And so you can use your authority and say, hey, can I pray over you? So you can use your authority, pray over them, and you can stop the demonic work that is affecting this um, person. Okay. Uh, so if as a believer you would do that, then you know you're basically using your authority to your kingdom authority that has been vested on you to minister to that person, um, or you know minister to something that person is being suffering with for such a long time, and uh, because you have that authority, you're using it the authority and that power and dominion of the king uh, who has vested it in you. You know will bring about healing, will bring about uh, deliverance. Okay. Uh, now. Uh, it, uh, it will also cause that person to, you know, experience the tangible presence, the power of the king of this kingdom, uh, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, and it's not going to take that person thousand sermons or hundred sermons or, you know, you just conversing with them, or, you know, arguing with them, debating with them about why Jesus is the true and living God, but just praying for them, just binding that, nullifying that work of the evil one, uh, uh, just will ex help them to experience um, uh, the transformative power of Christ, his, his power, his deliverance, um, his love for them, and they will know that Jesus Christ is real. So just a single prayer that you prayed as a believer, you know, who knows his or her authority, you know, will bring about that healing, will bring about that deliverance into that situation and can also change the eternal uh, destiny of that individual. And it can change the eternal destiny or the purpose of that um, person. Okay. So you and I uh, also have authority over not only just the demonic works, but also the natural elements uh, the the circumstances, the situations that uh, concerns us, um, that are in the world, things that are affecting us. Uh, for example, our jobs, our career, our future, our family. You know, um, uh, things that uh, relate to uh, uh, to us. We have authority to dominate those situations, those circumstances, uh, those things that are affecting us, that are a concern for us. Um, you know, um, uh, of course, for example, we can't, uh, you know, uh, for instance, stop every accident that happens on the road. We don't have authority to do that. But in our personal life, you know, things that are affecting us, the circumstances that are prevailing in our lives, we have the authority to dominate uh, that. So, you know, uh, when you are in the boat, uh, you know, your life is like that boat and you're facing a storm or you're seeing a storm that is uh, uh, raging, that is coming against you. What do you do? You know, you don't uh, uh, go into fear mode, you know, but you, uh, you can speak. You speak to that. You rise up. You use your authority. You speak to that storm that is coming. You see it coming. You foresee that coming like a prudent man who foresees evil, foresees uh, trouble. You know, you speak to that, you prepare for that, uh, just like Jesus who, you know, rose up and spoke to the winds and the waves and said, peace, be still. So you speak to your circumstances, you take uh, charge, you take authority because God has given you that authority, God has given you that dominion. What do we do is, you know, we... Um, uh, get into fear mode. Uh, we, you know, get so intimidated by everything. We get so overwhelmed. We run to, um, uh, you know, to pastors from bringing from the holiest to the second holy, the third holy. Who, you know, we run to different people. We ask them to pray. But Jesus has given us the King of the Kingdom has given us the 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 authority and the power to speak over the challenges, to speak over the situations, to speak over the difficulties and to exercise the God-given um, 
uh, authority that he has placed. So don't run to X, Y, Z, to the holiest person, to the prophet, and to call up prophets and, you know, to all of those things. Uh, I'm not saying don't do that. I mean, you can, but, you know, when, why do, why, uh, why panic when you have the authority in yourself and when the same spirit that is operating out of that prophet is also going to operate through you, you know, use what God has given you. Use that God-given authority to speak to your situations, your circumstances, uh, to speak into your lives, your jobs, your career, your your finances, your mind, um, uh, to the struggles that is 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 being is raging, the problems and difficulties that is raging in your life. You know, speak to those mountains, speak to those um, uh, uh, storms, and uh, command them to be still in Jesus' name. Command them to yield in Jesus' name, and you know, declare God's promises. Um, and when you exercise that God-given authority, you will see uh, the spiritual, the supernatural invade into the natural, and you will see what God can do in and through your uh, life. Another area that you have authority um, or you don't have authority over is over uh, people's will. Another area of authority that uh, you know, uh, one area of authority, sorry, that we don't have authority over is people's will. Okay, so this people's will is one area of authority that we don't have over. Um, you know, I can't uh, come to your house and say and command you to wake up at uh, five o'clock every morning and pray or four o'clock every morning and pray. I can't do that. I can't come to your house and say, hey, you need to do this. You, you need to do that. So we don't have authority over other people's will. That's a realm that we don't exercise authority over. Um, uh, I we can't control uh, people as robots, as machines. You know, um, uh, we can't do that. Uh, that is what witchcraft does. But we don't engage in witchcraft. Uh, but what we can do is we can affect their environment. If there is something that is demonic that is coming against them, that is um, uh, you know destroying their lives, destroying their peace of mind, then is that is something that we can do. We can step in, uh, you know, and we can pray for them. Uh, we can bring in the supernatural. We can bring in the spiritual to invade into their uh, natural circumstances. And we do that only if we have their permission, only if they are willing to allow us to step in then we can step in for them, we can exercise our faith, and we can um, help them, OK? So uh, before we move on, anyone has any questions? So basically, we've been seeing uh, the realms of authority that we have over. Um, and one area that we don't have authority over, we also saw that is people's will. Now, before we move on to how do we exercise our kingdom authority, anyone has any questions, any doubts? OK, if there's no questions and no doubts, then we'll move on. So how do we exercise our kingdom authority? Uh, the number one way we exercise our authority is uh, through the words of our mouth, OK? Um, uh, look at the book of Ecclesiastes. It, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Okay, So where the word of the king is, there is power. So we need to speak the words of authority. We need to issue those decrees, uh, you know, make those decrees come out in the name of Jesus. Uh, Jesus said, in my name, you will cast out devils. In my name, but the authority of my name, you will heal the sick in my name. So as believers, we have been given the right to use the name of Jesus. But uh, we need to understand that when we use the name of Jesus, we don't use it, uh, 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 use it in its terms of, uh, you know, in a, a, a like a magical charm, you know, just saying Jesus hundred times so that something will happen. Uh, that's not how we use the name of Jesus. But the name of Jesus is uh, when we use it, we're actually expressing that, you know, uh, the fact that we have been delegated by Him. Uh, to 
uh, or we have been given the authority by him to do what he would do if he were in that situation or we are delegated that authority to do things on behalf of him because he wants it to be done in that situation in that um, place so you know we have been uh, given this authority we have been delegated this authority by him to do this on his uh, behalf now for example um, you know if um, i work for the uh, just just for example i am the personal assistant of the chief minister okay of our state and uh, he gives me an assignment and says go and tell you know the people or go and tell so and so uh, this is what i told you to do and this is what needs to be done okay so i've been delegated this responsibility uh, uh, by the chief minister and i'm going on his behalf so when i go there i say hey the chief minister so and so has sent me and uh, you know he wants uh, uh, this work to be uh, done so you know i'm using his name and I'm saying what job needs to be done. And because of the authority of that name uh, that I've come on behalf and the, uh, you know, the authority that has or the assignment that has been delegated to me, the job is done. Okay, The person who I'm giving the job to does it because of uh, on whose behalf I'm coming. I'm coming on behalf of the chief minister. Okay, the same way, you know, the king of this kingdom, the king of the king of uh, kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, this king of glory has sent you, has sent me, and has given us the authority to use his name. Um, you know, um, and he's given us the authority to go and tell the world, uh, you know, about. Uh, who he is to preach and teach and also to tell the demonic powers that you have been authorized by this king jesus to get his work done in his name and that is why when we speak the name of jesus you know uh, demons shudder and shiver and uh, flee and we know that even satan knows his his position and where he is that he is already a defeated foe that he's stripped of all his powers when we come against it in jesus um, name now uh, take for example you know uh, jesus standing beside uh, uh, the bed of uh, peter's mother-in-law and we know that uh, uh, peter's mother-in-law was uh, sick with um, a fever high fever and uh, the bible says that you know jesus rebuked that fever and that fever left her okay we see that he didn't pray to the father about that fever he didn't say father you know if it is your will that you heal peter's mother-in-law please heal her uh, if it is your will that she be healed right now heal her but what does he do he just stands there and he rebukes uh, the fever so what jesus was basically doing was he was exercising his uh, authority that he had the authority that was vested upon him by the father you know to stand uh, in his place and to delegate the the job so it's it's uh, it's not a uh, um, god's design or god is not the author of sickness and disease and it's not god's will that anyone be sick and so jesus knew that he knew uh, what was the job need to be done he knew who you know who had given him the responsibility and so what does he do is he just uh, rebukes that fever he spoke to the fever and what happened the fever immediately left her so you know when you and i exercise authority when you and i speak to that condition in the body when we speak to that sickness um, when we speak to that disease you know um we use our god-given uh, authority uh, we use the name that uh, uh, the the authority stands by you know on whose behalf we are standing and when we when we use that authority and the name that uh, on whose behalf we stand we see uh, the authority just flowing through us we see god coming through and working on our um, behalf okay uh, let's read matthew chapter 6 verse 16 can somebody read matthew chapter 6 verse 16 please matthew chapter 6 verse 16 
Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Sorry, I don't think it is Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Mm. I think I got it mixed up. Okay. Um, I was basically looking for this verse when uh, Jesus, you know, casts out... Um, the spirits with his uh, word. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, in many instances, sorry, this is not the right reference. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 is not the right reference. Uh, let me see if it is. If there's any reference in the notes. Hmm. Mark chapter 16. Let me just look at what Mark chapter 16. Sorry about that. Mark. Mark chapter 16. Yeah, it is Mark. Sorry, it's not Matthew. Uh, it's Mark chapter 16, verses 17. And 18. Can somebody read that, please? Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Thank you, Anand. Thank you, Rin. Uh, so here we see that, you know, um, uh, Jesus says that, you know, uh, these signs will follow those who believe in my name, they will cast out. So it says that if you, that in Jesus name, they can cast out the spirits with his word. So when you speak to those demonic works, uh, when you speak to those demonic spirits in uh, Jesus name, you know, uh, those uh, those demonic works, those demonic spirits will uh, flee, will leave, will be nullified. Every work and assignment of the evil one will be uh, cancelled. And that is our authority and that is how we um, use it. Even we see that when Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves, you know, um, what did he, uh, when Jesus saw the winds and the waves, what did he do? He spoke to the winds and the Waves. He didn't talk to the father saying, you know, uh, you know, father, the waves are so high, uh, you know, please help me. What do I do? Uh, but what do we see? You know, Jesus immediately uh, gets up. He sees the winds and the waves. And what does he do? He uses his authority. How does he use his authority? He spoke to the winds and the waves and he said, peace be uh, still. So that is the way you and I use our authority. We speak uh, to the elements, we speak to our circumstances, we speak to that situation uh, in our workplace, um, uh, uh, we speak to that situation in our office, we speak to the situations in our family life, in our marriage, um, uh, uh, in our relationship with people, um, in the church, whatever. So, you know, we just speak uh, and use the name of Jesus and the authority that he has uh, given us. And we issue the decree uh, to exercise our um, authority, okay? Um, but if we don't issue the decree, if we don't speak over it, then what are we doing? We are basically, you know, it means that we're just basically accepting what is there if we don't speak. Now, most of the times I've heard people, you know, uh, when they come, uh, uh, you know, and they share their burdens, 
they say, I wish, you know, it was like this. I wish it was like that. I, I just long that, you know, uh, it'll be like this. I, I long that uh, things will change like this. I, I just hope that our family is like that family. I'm, my marriage is like that, uh, that marriage. My children were also like this. So it's all a hope. It's all a wish. It's all a longing. Uh, it's all a desire. I say, I, I, and I just tell them, you know, why don't you just make that your prayer? You know, just speak what you want to see in your life. You want to see this in your marriage. You want to see this happening in your life. You want to see this happening in your business, at your workplace. You know, we just wish, uh, we just desire, you know, but uh, why don't we just speak it over? Why don't we just declare it? Why don't we just um, say it uh, uh, in prayer and uh, speak God's promises uh, which, which align with, what our desires are because that is what God desires and he's birthing that desire in us and so even as he does it we need to speak that we need to make that our decree and speak that over our situations and our circumstances and we shouldn't think that you know when we do that we are uh, you know we are kind of being arrogant we are uh, being uh, trying to take God's place no because God has given us uh, the authority uh, to do that. But if we don't, we are basically, when we don't speak, we don't dec uh, decree, we don't declare, it's basically we are accepting what is there and we're just living by um, uh, by it, okay? So the first thing that, uh, the first way that we exercise our authority is by speaking, by declaring, and by uh, and doing that by using the name of Jesus. Another way that we exercise our authority is by the power of the Holy uh, Spirit. Okay, uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon us. The anointing empowers us uh, to overcome uh, every works of darkness. The anointing is the anointing that breaks the yokes. The anointing that uh, uh, removes burden. Uh, so that is why you and I need to pray and ask God for more of the anointing of His Spirit in our lives. Why do we need to? Um, uh, pray for more of anointing because it's the anointing that empowers us to overthrow the works of darkness, to speak into our situations, and it's the anointing that breaks the yokes and removes uh, burdens, okay? Now, uh, we can uh, desire to be uh, a little wire that conducts just like one amp or 1.5 amps of electricity, or you can choose to be that wire that can be that high tension wire that you know conducts kilowatts of power. So again, it's a choice. Okay. So today we've been seeing you know you can either choose to be uh, take uh, 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 you know be like the policeman who exercises his traffic uh, uh, the rules uh, you know the authority that he has to uh, uh, bring about traffic rules. To see the traffic rules are, uh, are, um, uh, are followed or we can be like the traffic police who can just turn away and even when there's a violation of the traffic rule or we can be like people you know even though we are seated in the, at the right hand of God we can choose to you know just fall asleep and be cozy there at the right hand of God or we can choose to use our authority and uh, you know overthrow the powers of darkness and we can also choose you know whether we want to be that little wire where we conduct just 1.5 amps of um, electricity or we can choose to be that high tension wire that conducts kilowatts of power so it's a choice that you and i um, make god has given us the authority but what i'm trying to say is and i'm just trying to challenge each one of us to rise up to the uh, to to know what authority God has given to us and to use it in the fullest um, uh, sense, okay? So it's a choice that we make uh, because the, the, the power source is unlimited, you know? The source of power is unlimited. God is unlimited in his power. He is omnipotent. He is unlimited in his supply. And um, But what flows through us depends upon how much we are willing to yield, how much we are willing to submit, and how much we really desire and long, uh, and what kind of anointing that we need, okay? Uh, the Bible says that we will be, that we are strengthened with power in our spirit man, that we are strengthened with power in, in, uh, in our spirit, in our inner man. So we need to strengthen our inner man and not to strengthen it with, you know, just one, 
amp of electricity, but you know, just desire more because it's a God who wants to give us more. He wants to give us that uh, uh, that unlimited power supply that He wants to give us, so that we can be people who would, you know, manifest His kingdom, demonstrate His kingdom here on um, earth. So let's pursue God for, you know, a greater anointing. Uh, with the Holy Spirit, let's pursue God for more of His Spirit. You know, um, we can say that today, you know, we can't see cancer healed, uh, but we can pray and we can say, God, you know, anoint me so that I can see cancers being healed today. We can say, hey, in our church today, we can't see the lame walk, but let's pray and say, God, anoint me because. Uh, we know that, you know, you anointed these ordinary men in the book of Acts and um, the lame walked and, you know, they, they went leaping and jumping and praising you. Uh, and we want to see the same thing in our day and age. We don't want to just keep on saying that it happened in the, uh, in the book of Acts. It happened then. It's not happening now, you know. Or why is it not happening? And we can blame people. We can blame pastors, we can blame the church, the the the, congreg uh, the believers, but let's just, you know, come to a place where saying, God, you know, um, I want more of your anointing because I want to see cancers healed today. I want more of your anointing because I want to see, uh, when I pray, I want to see the lame walk, the blind uh, to see. So uh, we need to be, uh, the, the question is, are we willing to pursue God for that kind of uh, anointing? Are we willing to say, God, I want, I want more of it? Or are we going to be that the church that is just very happy with uh, the little that God is doing, just feeling the tangible presence of God, just feeling uh, happy, just feeling excited uh, in the presence of God, you know, um, and just saying, you know, I'm just going to worship and praise God because anyway, I'm going to heaven, that's okay. Um, but you know, in heaven, there will be no demons for us to cast, you know, out. There'll be no um, lame people for us to be to be prayed over. There'll be no sicknesses to be healed. So, if we ever want to do those things, if we want to ever see God doing those things, we need to do it here and um, now. So, let's pursue that. Let's press in and say, God, we want more of your anointing, more of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, so that we can see these things happening uh, in our day, in our age, in our uh, church. It's in the Bible. It's for us. And uh, this is how the world will know uh, the message that we are bringing about the kingdom of God. And this is how the world will know that Jesus is the true and living God. Jesus is the only God. And so we need to press in for more of the anointing uh, of God in our circumstances. The third way that we can bring uh, the kingdom of God into our circumstances is to pray. Okay, Jesus prayed and he said, you know, that kingdom come and we need to pray uh, his kingdom come into our situation. We need to pray the kingdom of God come into our problem. We need to pray that the kingdom of God come um, among the people uh, that we are living among, uh, amongst uh, the kingdom of God come into our uh, locality, our city, our nation and the nations of the um, world. Okay. Um, so, you know, um, when people look at us, they need to look at us as people who uh, uh, can see the kingdom of God, the power of God, the authority of God that is, uh, or is within us, that God has placed, that, has, that he has vested in our um, lives. Okay. So the next time, uh, you know, you and I face difficult situations, the next time you meet somebody who is uh, being troubled with demonic powers, the next time... Uh, uh, we, uh, you know, you encounter a storm or a wind that can rise up, um, you know, uh, against you. Uh, you know, you can say, hey, I have kingdom authority in me. Let me dominate the situation. And, um, you know, how can you dominate this situation? You can exercise your God-given authority to calm the storm, to bring the healing to the sickness, to undo the works of the devil in that uh, place. So we need to think kingdom authority, we need to think kingdom dominion, uh, and we need to also have the assurance that we can uh, do that, okay? Because God has gone to the extreme length, so to say, to give us that authority. Uh, he's gone to the extreme lengths to purchase that authority back into our lives because of what he has done on the cross. He 
purchased that, he bought us that authority back into our lives um, by paying the price on the cross, by giving his very life on the cross. If it wasn't for that, uh, for the cross, then you and I will not have the authority that we have um, today. Um, but, you know, Jesus went to that extent to raise us up so that we could be seated with him in heavenly places, uh, not just to, you know, sing hallelujah, not just to sing praise the Lord, you know, uh, choruses or say hallelujah, but, you know, uh, that we could be uh, the emissaries of his kingdom here on earth and, you know, bring his kingdom into this one, or we can bring his kingdom into our natural realm, bring his kingdom into our world and just invade this world with his uh, kingdom authority, his kingdom power and his kingdom dominion. Okay. This is chapter eight, kingdom authority. Anyone has any questions? Any doubts, anything that you like to say? So I hope this is not just going to be a, a class lecture that you are, uh, you know, that you have to listen, that you are, uh, uh, you know, that you have enrolled in uh, to listen to. But I hope this will become a, a reality in your life because this is the truth, this is the reality, and this is what God has done for us um, by, you know, giving His only Son and Jesus Christ giving His life so that, you know we can receive back this authority that he gave to us when he created us, when he created Adam and Eve, he gave them the authority, but he purchased back that authority and he's given that to us. So we need to use that authority. Any questions, any doubts? Okay, if there are no questions, no doubts, we'll end class. I'm not going to begin chapter nine because it'll be an overdose. <laughs> okay, we'll kind of, uh, we've got a good dose of kingdom authority today. So, yes, Anand. Yes, Anand, go ahead. You have your hand up. Rin, you have your hand up. Yes, Pastor, I have just have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so um, for this authority to become more effective and like if we, uh, like as you said, like if you want to see signs, miracles and wonders happen, like um, so we can uh, actually uh, practice it like amongst maybe like our own um, setting, our own uh, place, like where we we all think alike. Like, like maybe in the supernatural hour, like we can practice that, and and uh, like and through that, like will we also increase in our anointing or not? Yes. So um, you've already been given that authority. You you wanted you desire for more of the anointing. You step out even as God leads you. You can begin with your own life. You, there are a lot of things that in our in our own lives that we see things, circumstances, situations which we can speak over, decree over, you know. And then yes, you can do that even in your sphere of influence. So your sphere of influence now, where you're staying, is Bible College, is your uh, classmates, is the other students as well, and in your in the hostel that you're staying. So. You exercise that and then when you go to church on Sunday, wherever you're ministering, you know, whoever you're speaking to, you know, uh, they're just sharing their life. They're just sharing their challenge. You can just step and say, can, hey, can I pray for you? Uh, so, you know, just believe that uh, you have been given that authority. Just believe that you can pray for them in Jesus' name and um, God is going to work. He is going to do things in their um, lives. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Did that help? Yes, it did. Yeah. Okay.
Anand, you had a question or it was it just for Rini? Okay. Anyone it else? Was, it was for me, Pa. Okay. Okay, then. Thank you. Anyone else has any questions, doubts? Okay, if not, we'll um, stop here. Um, we'll, uh, I'd like to give you the first assessment for uh, on chapters one to uh, four. I think that there are, uh, sorry. Oh, there's uh, 11 lessons. So maybe one chapters one to six, And then we can have the second assessment from chapter 7 to 11. So do you all want to have the assessment for chapters 1 to 5 and then the second assessment from chapter 6 to 11 or the first assessment from chapters 1 to 6 and second assessment from chapters 1 to 11? And when do you all want to have that? We have it sometime next week. This is for the online students, not for the in-person students. So request the online person uh, students to please um, unmute and share. Next week, OK? You're OK with chapters 1 to 6? Is that fine? Chapters 1 to 6, is that fine? OK. OK, thank you. OK. Uh, when can we have it, online students? When do you all want to have it? Do you all want to have it over the weekend, during the weekday? Can you suggest some day for me uh, next week, please? Next week, when do you want to have that? Weekdays are fine for all of you. So say we can have it on the 3rd of October and you all can submit it on the 4th. Is that OK? Or do you want two days? If I post that um, on Tuesday evening, that is the 3rd, uh, is 4th OK or do you want 5th evening? OK, 5th is fine. Is that fine? OK, so yeah, fifth is fine. OK, so then uh, for the online students, um, I'll post the assessment on the 3rd of October, um, say by uh, 6 PM. And then you all can submit it on the 5th by 6 PM. Is that fine? OK. Okay, this is for the online students and e-learning students as well. Okay, okay, thank you everyone for uh, joining class. Have a blessed week and uh, see you all next Monday. Thank you.